Bonjour. Qui présente de conseil? As uh, the uh, chair of Canadian Kennel Club, I have the honor and the great pleasure to welcome you here at our general annual meeting. I would like to thank you very much for being here and thank you for your participation. The uh, Canadian Kennel Club is uh, happy to be here in the national capital of Quebec. We hope that you will find that this meeting is constructive and informative. So French is not a, a strength. So I will continue in English, if I may, to avoid uh, any confusion. Thank you. And I now call on the... Uh Honorary Chair, introductions of the board members and the staff and explanation of our voting procedure. Those of you with blue tags, you get to raise your hands and to vote. I would like to introduce the board or have them stand and introduce themselves, which is better <coughs> if I can't see the end. <laughs> Richard Paquette from Ontario North, which, which a zone that stretches all the way from the greater Toronto region to the Manitoba, or Manitoba border. And uh, I'm very pleased to see such a great turnout here and uh, appreciate your dedication to our sport of your Red Dogs. Is uh, Paul Slotch, Zone 6, Ontario West. And I too really do appreciate the strong turnout that we see here. And thank you for coming today. Je m'appelle Peter Lavenfall Wolfish, and I'm the director of the Zone 7, Ontario. Fantastic to be here as well, and my colleagues have indicated. Very impressive. I think we have like four chairs every day, so spectacular attendance. So thank you very much for coming out today. Larry Carolyn from Zone 8 in Manitoba. <laughs> Dave Gilmore from Zone 9, Saskatchewan. It is very honored to be in here in your beautiful city. Sharon Derrick from uh, Zone 10. This is Alberta, Nunavik, and Northwest Territories. And I'm very pleased to be here and to see such a lovely turnout. I would like to introduce somebody that you already all know, Ed Gravely, who is our honorary chair, and he will have more to say later, I am sure. <laughs> on, on my right is Lila Bohori, who is our acting uh, executive director. Lance Novak was unable to attend due to a family uh, health emergency. And uh, I'd like to introduce Lila Bohori, and I'd like her to have her staff introduce themselves. Good morning. Um, and welcome to our annual general meeting. It's a beautiful city, and it's lovely to be here. This is my second visit here. I was here 10 years ago, 10 in AGM in Quebec City. So thank you very much. And now I uh, will introduce our staff. I'm McKinnon. I'm the manager of Market Expansion. And I'm Sandra Varius. I'm controller. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sherry Wise. I'm manager of events. It's great to be in Quebec City. Bonjour et bienvenue. Je m'appelle Annette Meggs. Je suis le secrétaire. As you are aware, part of the, the, this meeting will be in English and part in French, depending on the mood, depending on where the questions are coming from. Uh, that's why the board has these, and I hope if you require translation that you have a, a set as well that are available at the back. Um, I would like at this time to thank Linda St. Hilaire and the Quebec City Club members for their warm hospitality who have helped us around this city. 
and uh, make sure everything has, has gone right. Uh, I would like to pass, have Linda have the committee stand so they can be recognized. Yes, I would like to uh, give remercier uh, chaleureusement Carole Delorme, qui a travaillé très fort dans l'organisation et qui a été notre chauffeur. <rire> Regarde le monsieur. Regarde le petit oiseau. <rire> OK. Ensuite, M. Yves Dumont. Juste le de la société Vice-président de la Société canine de Québec, employé de la chaîne Jaro. Et son euh, ex est là. Et mon, mon ex, puisque ça est là. Euh, Yves euh, nous a beaucoup aidés dans la préparation de l'événement et il a été aussi chauffeur. Et, euh... <rire> Merci, Yves. On regarde le petit oiseau. Enlève tes écouteurs. En fait, que toi, là. Merci. Ensuite, j'aimerais remercier Grace Dufault. Uh, you didn't see her very much yesterday. She's the one who put together the rally. Uh, Grace, what did you say? I'm here for the first time. She has helped in the preparation of the Assembly General, but yesterday she mounted a rally that we went to the Hotel Palace Royal. We went to the restaurant at Jules. People have visited the city of Quebec, have learned details about the city of Quebec, and have met two races less known, Berger and Picard. And the Brac d'Auvel, who will be the first one, if you vote, will be the first one. Thank you very much. 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 Thank
Karsten Kamling, who I hope you never get to meet. He is the head of the discipline committee. Our auditor from BDO Canada, Marcus Sconci. And for all you aspiring judges, this is the person you've got to go after. It's the president of the CDJA, Margaret Jones. <laughs> Maybe I won't stand it. <laughs> if you have any problems, see her. <laughs> I'd also like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, our very generous sponsors this year who have helped uh, defray some of the costs for our annual general meeting. Uh, our presenting sponsor this year is Pets Plus Us. You'll hear later from Leah Stevenson. We have a small presentation uh, concerning the, the value of, of pet insurance. And uh, the CKC, have, we've been working with Pets Plus Us for the past few years to provide our members with uh, pet insurance as well as a six-week free trial that's available from the breeders to the, the individuals. Uh, BFL Canada is also a sponsor. It's uh, our insurance company that uh, it has great travel insurance, I can tell you. So it's um, a company that we deal with that our members get special discounts. So if you're ever looking to travel, check out BFL. TSL Whole World Life Pet Foods and Rico is one of our builder sponsors. So we, we encourage you to visit our sponsors and their websites because they help make presentations like this more affordable for you as members. I have been noted that Dr. Carrier is beside us and he will be introduced later for his presentation, but I, I don't want to not acknowledge him. But if you're looking down the table and saying, well, everybody's accounted for it on this channel. So we've accounted for him and we will, we will introduce him fully later on. <coughs> We are now at the point where my good friend to my left, Mr. Ed Gravely, has been serving for 2015 as our honorary chair, and I would like to allow him, it says to say a few words, but I've known Ed for a long time. Not only does it, does it might not be a few words, but I'm a little nervous of to what he might say. <laughs> my, my, my friend. Merci, Bob. Ça m'a fait grandement plaisir. Thank you, Bob. Very happy to be here in Quebec City with the uh, members of the province. I would like to start and say that uh, I'm also very happy to see that uh, Linda Sentinel took my, the place I had, and she's dealing with you with uh, great uh, commitment. Thank you, Linda. I would like to thank the board of directors for being kind in appointing me as your honorary chair. It's a privilege. It's something that I will cherish for the rest of my life. i got to say something, and I don't know how I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'll say something else first. Um, I want to send a message uh, to the members uh, with us here today. I just want to tell you. Enjoy our sport. Continue to support the Canadian Kennel Club, the Conseil d'administration des employés. Board of Directors, employees, staff, and continue to support your clubs. Because without your clubs, uh, there would be no uh, canine exhibition and most importantly work hard work work hard to sell registered dogs to everybody don't keep that uh, will to have more dogs uh, raised by breeders the one of 
Permi la, les responsibilités qu'on One of our res uh, responsibilities as uh, directors is uh, to give the Plex uh, 50 uh, years of members of the Canadian Club. Now, I had the opportunity. Sure. Ed would have would have liked to have mentioned that he he was the one that presented the fifty year plaques to both Bill Taylor and Gene Whitford, who many of you in this room have known for many, many years. I think both of them showed him. Well, Jean was in the ring into her 80s, and of course, Bill, Bill Taylor was an icon throughout not only Quebec and Canada, but throughout the world for his Pekingese. And um, my friend Ed Gravely had the opportunity to present both of these CKC members with their 50 year plaques. And not only were they CKC members, to Mr. Gravely, they were extremely good friends. So I, I understand his his angst in trying to emote what he wants to say, and and, and I appreciate that. And uh, I thank Ed especially for his remarks. One of the things that directors get to do that is most pleasant, because quite often when we go to a show or we go somewhere, we're bombarded by problems that we have to solve for you, and we try hard. But one of the pleasures we have is when we get to present 50-year plaques or other mementos <coughs> of recognition. And I would like to present a certificate of appreciation to the Honorary Chair, 2015-16, he can hang it in his music room. <laughs> <laughs> to announce that the 2016 Honorary Chair of the Canadian Kennel Club is Geraldine Taylor from Dugald, Manitoba. Every year we have an Honorary Chair. As I mentioned earlier, our major sponsor for the uh, annual general meeting is Pets Plus Us. And I'd like at this time to, to invite Leah Stevenson from Pets Plus Us to, to make a small presentation, a short presentation on the topic of, of pet insurance and is it worth it. When you uh, registered, you were giving, given a package and in that package, I hope, were minutes from the previous annual general meeting. And I'm sure that you've had nothing to do all morning and that you've already read these pages <laughs> as to what we did last year in Guelph. And I would like somebody to move that these minutes be adopted. I would prefer somebody to finish there. So. Madame saint Hilaire and a seconder, Ron Deschef. All in favor? Opposed? 
I'm good at that of both. <laughs> Minutes carried. Thank you very much. Correspondence. Do we have any correspondence? This is my actor. Executive director. She's a very good actor. And she makes her a very good executive director. No, we, we do not have any correspondences. I would now like to invite the auditor, Marcus Sconci from BDO, to present our financial statements, which you also had when you came in and were handed. And I'm sure you've read these cover to cover. <laughs> but in case you haven't, Mr. Sconci will do a great rundown, and I'm sure you will answer any questions. Does anybody have any questions regarding the financial that we can uh, ask Marcus? <coughs> Some pressure on him. <laughs> Put me on the hot seat. Yes? Just an explanation about the, the uh, in French, we see the don versé. It's uh, effective on the exposition farm. Can you speak up, please? It's uh, the page five. Okay, when you see the negative on the affection uh, on the exposition farm, 69 on the uh, don versé. Uh, tell me about what 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 this. So that, that was made up, there was uh, two different disbursements of funds. There was uh, $40,000 to the National Services Dog and 29000 to the Lions Foundation of Canada. So those were two donations, I believe, that were made, um, just dispersing out the remaining funds because those funds were there for the betterment of canines in general, so they were there to be spent on any canine-related activities, and those were the two that were chosen. Okay. I, I can add a little bit that was from the, those were funds that were left over from the Purina National when the CKC was involved. And uh, they sat in our unrestricted funds for several years. And we had an agreement with Purina that these funds would be distributed to a mutually benefit, uh, a mutual uh, organization that we both agreed with. And that's, that was the disbursement. So that line is now closed. Thank you. Any other questions for the for the discussion? Could I have somebody move that the financial audited financial statement? Dumont. Eve. Could you Dumont? Eve Dumont. A seconder? I can't. In the back? Uh, Julie Brossard? Trottier. Julie Trottier. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you very much, and thank you very much, Mr. Sconson. My report, this will take a long time. <laughs> two minutes. Two minutes? I have two minutes? Max. <laughs> I will keep this short. My favorite phrase since I've got on the CKC board is that the CKC is at a crossroads. A year ago at the annual general meeting in Guelph, I said the CKC was at a crossroads. Here I am saying the CKC is at a crossroads. We're always at a crossroads. Again, I suspect we always will be at a crossroad. We will always be looking forward, left and right, hopefully never behind us. And at this time, I'd like to take a short look at the past. I've been on the board now for seven and a half years. And I'd also like to share with you my vision of the future and what I hope you as members can look forward to. In 2009, when I was first elected to the board, we were bankrupt. We were, we couldn't meet our staff payment. And during that time, 
the board that was elected, and this gentleman to my left was on this that board, we were faced with some extremely, extremely tough decisions that impacted our members and the Canadian Kennel Club. I'm a journalist by trade. Newspapers, magazines, radio. One of the first decisions we had to make was to discontinue dogs in Canada. God, it hurt me. It really hurt me to do it. But it was costing us close to a million dollars a year <coughs> of your members' money. We could not continue to do that. And although the decisions were made by the entire board, I, I would be totally remiss not to mention two members of that board, of this organization, that moved forward and helped us over an extremely rocky time. One was former board chair Lee Steves, who spent countless hours of her hours writing the ship, going into the office from living in Halifax to make sure that we saved the CKC. There wasn't that much concern. And the other director that stood tall and made some strong, decisive, and, so, and they were some unpopular decisions, was this gentleman to my left who read those financial statements and he hammered everybody about the financial hit statements. And <coughs> we started to cut back. We started to look for new sources of revenue. Clubs came to our aid. Everybody involved in the CKC jumped in with passion. Today, as you just heard from our financial, the, the financial prospect is much brighter. We have an accumulated surplus, surplus of over two million dollars. <coughs> it's a big turnaround in seven years. Now mind you, a portion, uh, a large portion of, of those, that surplus is being held for restricted projects such as the IT for You project, which we'll, you will hear more about, and to, which is to replace our aging computer system. Any of you who have tried to do anything, including our staff, and the, whenever we come up with a new program, we're told our computer system can't handle that. We want a rule change our computer system can. It's how many years old? 30? 33. 33 years old. <laughs> I don't own a cell phone, but that would be like me using a rotary phone. It's that old. And because of that, it's really limited the board. The board would come up with a great idea, and we tell the staff, do it, and they say, oh, can't we do that? So this new system that we're looking at now, and we're getting closer, we're, we're, we're borderline getting it running, and what we have done with this IT for you, we have consulted our members. We've asked you what you want. We've been at shows asking what do you hope that we can deliver, and we're building that in. So we are now in the, the I believe it would be fair to say we're in the process of selecting the software and the company to implement <coughs> those changes. And by September we will have that person on board. We've hired a project manager and things are going, hopefully by the end of 2017, <laughs> Peter, no 2017, this should, it'll be up and running a little bit, it'll be phased in, but we, we can hope to see more and greater things so that, and I don't want to steal anybody's thunder, but you'll be able to do more online registrations. Uh, we're, we're, the pie in the sky, our dreams are, is that if you want to register your dog in Canada and in the United States with the AKC, tick a box, send in the money, and it'll be registered in both countries right off the bat. Mm. Things like this. That, and we're hoping, and I know I shouldn't say this, we're hoping that when you go to a show on Saturday and Sunday and you get home, that by Wednesday your results will be on the line. That has been what the members want the most. And that's what we're working for. And it's going to cost money, hopefully. The good news, it's all going to cost money. Good news. I like good news because there's enough bad news. 
last year, 2015, our event entries and our litter registration were slightly higher than in 2014. I think they were up like 0.03%. <laughs> but you know what? That's the first time as long as I've been on the board that they haven't gone down 5 to 7%. So if they're not going down, I'm quite happy to just start the climb. The first three months of this year also look very promising. Purebred dogs are making a comeback. If we register more dogs, more will be entered in our events and it'll continue to climb and hopefully we can combat the labradoodles, et cetera, et cetera. So that is our hope. Uh, the first part of this year, I think our confirmation entries are up about, the last I heard, about 7%, <coughs> according to the last report I got uh, over the same period last year. 7% is a good job. Now that doesn't mean we're going to stay, we'll know at the end of the year. But we can only hope it continues to the end of the year. That's not to say that we don't have concerns. Good news, bad news. Our clubs, the backbone of the Canadian Kennel Club, were struggling with meeting their costs. A lot of it due to venues, not only costs of venues, but finding suitable venues for dog shows. Uh, they're, they're faced with other costs, uh, for, right from hotel costs going up and, uh, and, and food costs for the judges, airline costs going up to fly judges in. So the, the clubs are actually struggling because of the increased costs and the entry stabilizing. So now we're hoping that with the entries we'll start, start to, to climb a little bit. There's the argument there's too many shows. I don't think Quebec has a problem of too many shows. I think Ontario has a problem with too many shows. Uh, and that will eventually sort itself out because they just won't be able to continue to operate <coughs> and pay their bills. The other element that is of great concern, and, and we had discussions yesterday about, about how to handle it because we really haven't been a strong advocate in, in many of our provinces, and that is the advocacy of purebred dogs. Governments across this country, Quebec, British Columbia, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, they, they've been listening to animal activists, they've been listening to, to, to other groups, and they've been making it very difficult for our breeders on licensing, cropping and docking and due clause, and many other issues. And we really haven't jumped to the forefront. This year we have, to some extent, tried to get involved and to get to the decision makers and to <coughs> let them know that we, as a Canadian Kennel Club representing 20,000 members, are stakeholders in these decisions. We know I would say 99.9% .9 of our members are not puppy mills. There's a few bad breeders, but it's going to happen. However, we're dealing with the British Columbia government right now, uh, and we are on their list that they actually consult with us. Uh, Quebec, we didn't uh, jump as quick as we should have to help Linda deal with the, the, the issues here in, in Quebec. Uh, but now we're getting a framework and that's what we're trying to build is a framework that we can react because it's happened in, in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Quebec, and British Columbia. It's coming to a uh -huh. movie house near you, trust me. It, it's going to go into Alberta. It's going to go into Saskatchewan. We have to represent our members. And that's, that's something that the CKC is aware of. And we're trying very hard to, to set up a framework and, uh, and a body that can respond to some of these issues when they come to our forefront. It's not, it's not a fight that the members that you see up here can fight totally by themselves. This is a fight that represents dogs, all of our members, everyone in the room. You're, you're our allies. You have to help us fight this battle. 
and when somebody goes to meet the legislature to talk to the, a minister of agriculture or, or, or to a veterinarian association, you shouldn't send them by themselves. They need help. I mean, you should, you know, a, not a force, but a presence that I think that you have to give up some of your time to, to help your directors, regardless of what province you're in, to meet these challenges that we are. Earlier I introduced, uh, or I had the board introduce themselves actually, because I'm a coward. As, as chairman of the board, I want to publicly, publicly acknowledge to you as members how proud I am of this board. This is, a, this is a very, very new board. After the last election, seven of these people in front of you were first time members on the board. It was a huge turnover. There was only four returning members and one recycled member. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of a word for Richard, so recycled came up. Oh, returning member. <laughs> Sorry, Richard. As any of you who have sat on a volunteer board knows, there is a learning curve. You sit on the CKC board, the first year is a learning curve. You don't know where to go. You have a member ask you a question and you say, I want to help you. Who can answer that? Do I go to Lila? No. Do I go to Sherry? Where do I go to get? So there's a learning curve. And let me tell you, these members have handled that learning curve faster than anybody I've seen. They have figured it out quicker and they're working very hard on your, your behalf. And, and I'm, as I say, I'm very proud of them because they have brought to this board energy, enthusiasm. If you sit on a board for seven years, you know what will and will not work, and sometimes you won't try it because you know it's not going to work. <laughs> These guys don't know it won't work. <laughs> so they bring it to the board and they make it work. Proud of them. Kudos to them. I might add that the board is only as strong as, as the organization and the personnel. And our executive director, Lance Novak, who can't be here today, and his staff, they've reduced event result times. They've increased the, the quickness of, of uh, registrations. They've done a lot of countless changes to the office and to personnel. And we're improving our services even before the computer. Once we get the book, it's just going to be right through. But this staff, and we've added some new staff, and it is working, and I'm very, very happy, and, and I think the board is as well. I can't speak for them, but uh, we're continuing to work in this area to improve staff and to improve our services. We, are, um, we answer to you, the members. We have to improve our services to you, and that's what we're trying to do, and we're trying to improve them greatly. Last page, aren't you glad? <laughs> I would also be remiss in not taking this time to thank the tireless work of our committees. We have many, many committees in our organization. Confirmation committee, EOC committee. These people spend hours on conference calls, hours of their time. And they're the backbone of the organization. They make the recommendations that the board look at and then bring to the board and implement. So the, the, the committee system is very important. And I think we have a very hard working group of committees. I'm sure some of you sit on those committees and I want to thank you personally and we really appreciate it. So once again, as I say, as you can see, we're at a crossroads. Computers, the end of 2017, there's going to be glitches. I want you to be patient. There will be glitches. I've never seen an, a new program for computers introduced that didn't have glitches. However, when it's all said and done, I think you're going to be extremely pleased with what we have. So, we are looking ahead. We're looking to the left and right, looking for that train that might hit us. We're not looking behind us. We're going ahead. 
and I want to thank every one of you because you're such an important cog in this wheel that's driving us ahead. And I want to thank you all very much. Thank you. <laughs> now it's Leela's turn, and she hates public speaking. <laughs> However, since Lance can't be here, Leela's going to, to, li to deliver the report. Part of it. The good part or the bad part? The good part. The good part. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Carrier is the honorary <coughs> vet for 2015-16 as well. I did not mention that at the beginning because I wanted to make sure he had a good presentation <laughs> before we took over and said he was our honorary vet. Thank you. He, it was a wonderful presentation and I want to thank you for a year of being the honorary vet. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'd also like to announce the honorary vet for 2016, and it's Dr. Carol Graham from Hillsburg, Ontario. I think lunch is ready, so we'll take it. This is the first time that you'll get some money back from the CKC. We're going to buy <laughs> Not a big lunch, just a white lunch. Remember earlier we said some of the most pleasant things we do is to present awards and recognition to various members, CKC members. And this is one that I would like to present to, before you sit down, Sharon, could you come up here, please? <laughs> Probably wanted more of this, isn't it? <laughs> Sharon vo volunteered to be a director for Alberta when the director who ran resigned before the first meeting. <laughs> he heard about the rest of the people who were elected. I think. And Sharon stepped in and has been just wonderful. But Sharon has also been a member of the Canadian Cattle Club for 50 years. Wow. Wow. And this plaque is dedicated to Sharon. Here's the letter to go with it. I hope you have it framed. It's been folded to get here, so we'll give you a new one that's not if you want to put it, you know. <laughs> I'll give you a L'Assemblée générale annuelle est ici cette année et l'an prochain, c'est Sharon qui va nous recevoir chez elle à Calgary. I want to thank the board of directors and the CKC. Um, this is a wonderful, and I'm quite proud of it because I've really been a fan of the Canadian Kennel Club for over 50 years. <laughs> Mind you, I started when I was five. <laughs> <laughs> We're not done yet. Maybe we have enough for everybody. <laughs> Are you inferring they're all old? Some of them I see. <laughs> Some of them I see are. Some of them I've known for 35, 40 years. The next person I've known for an awful long time, I remember him when he had Cocker Spaniels. Could Robert Healy come up? Come on down! Mr. Healy also has been a member of the Canadian Cattle Club for 50 years, and in recognition. Thank you. Please accept this on our.
our behalf. Thank you for your many years of service. Something new that the CKC has added to the annual general meeting has been the recognition. When we go into a next year, we'll recognize Calgary members. But this is the first year that we've done regional, and we would like to recognize some of the members from Quebec who have given so much to the, to the CKC. The next award is for Mario Beauregard, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, for his contribution to the Canadian Kennel Club. Alors, il est très impliqué avec les chaises de Pig Bay. Il a fait aussi de la conformation. On a le droit d'aller au the dark side. Mais oh, aussi side. De la, de, des concours de chasse. Il est juge dans deux disciplines en chasse, avec le CKC. Et il a été très important pour euh, faire renaître le club de chaises de Pig et les clubs de chasse au Québec. Alors, euh, c'est pour ça que les gens nous ont soumis votre candidature. Merci beaucoup. Et félicitations. Merci. introduction justice. You all know her probably better than I do. But my notes say she's a founding member of the Society Caninda Quebec. She's a former breeder of boxers and has been show chair for the past 40 years. This is the type of volunteer every club needs. 40 years of show chair? Alors commencez maintenant. We can't keep them for two. So, and she's also still very, very active. Congratulations and thank you thank very you. much. a new sponsor for our agility team. It's now the Subaru Agility Team Canada. Annie Vizina. Annie. Annie was on the FCI World Team last year and represented Canada. competitor who improved from tryouts to the FCI, a great team member, supportive and enthusiastic, and has also been involved in breeding, showing and handling and confirmation, and trained and showed to the utility, or in my case when I try at the futility level. <laughs> 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 
Alors, en français, pour ceux qui n'ont pas compris, Annie n'est pas seulement maintenant très active en agilité, mais depuis, elle a commencé dans le dark side de la conformation et de l'obéissance. Elle a fait de l'utilité avec un Yorkshire Terrier, ce qui est quand même pas rien. Et elle est qualifiée avec ses deux chiens au concours mondial dans deux, deux disciplines différentes, dans deux, deux activités. Une euh, en juillet, en France. Et la deuxième en Espagne, un peu plus tard. Donc, euh, elle est très active. Ceux qui sont intéressés de l'encourager, à l'arrière, vous avez une œuvre d'art qui est offerte en tirage. Vous pouvez encourager euh, Annie et l'aider à financer sa participation en participant au tirage. plaque is for Suzanne Labry. Suzanne was one of the four Canadians who traveled to the 2015 IFCS World Agility Championships. She and her Shetland Sheepdog Calas placed seventh in the individual biathlon jumpers and agility and 13th in the individual all around in the four events. And she's uh, representing Canada, but she's from this area. Et Suzanne ne pouvait pas être présente avec nous aujourd'hui, quelque chose de dernière minute, mais rien de grave qu'elle m'a dit. Donc, euh, je vais m'arranger pour être présente lors d'un concours d'agilité pour qu'on puisse lui remettre ça devant les gens impliqués. Et euh, j'aimerais que vous remarquiez qu'on a tenté de reconnaître des gens dans le plus de disciplines différentes possibles. Et c'est l'intention euh, en continuant. Une autre reconnaissance qui va donner justement en obéissance, et elle ne pouvait pas être ici aujourd'hui, c'est Mme Léa Langlois, qui est active depuis plus de 65 ans dans les concours d'obéissance, principalement dans la région de Montréal, et elle était une de celles qui a été les pionnières pour instaurer au Canada le rallye obéissance. Alors, euh, on va aussi se déplacer et aller lui remettre son certificat lors d'une compétition d'obéissance elle est active beaucoup avec le club Lakeshore euh, et Blue Ribbon à Montréal. Donc, euh, Mme Léa Langlois ne pouvait pas être avec nous aujourd'hui. Bon. Could I have some member move that we adjourn? I motion. <laughs> Glory Campbell. Seconder. Seconder. All in favor? Okay. Now, before you all race out of here to where it's cooler, And for a quick beer, <laughs> I want to really, truly thank you. This is one of the better turnouts that we have had at our annual general meeting. And I think you should be proud of yourself. And as a member of this board, and as chairman of this board, I truly appreciate when I see members who are active and who want to participate and who want to be part of the solution. So again, I. Thank you very, very much. Merci. Adieu.